Hello, uh, today we're going to go over the console for a weld station. Uh, we've set this up for a customer to put four stitch welds 90 degrees apart. Uh, starting from the top left, we have our power on button. Uh, once we push that in, it uh, latches a coil in the cabinet and allows the rest of the functions to energize and we can continue uh, operating the machine. Our next button is auto and manual. Automatic mode, uh, the operator would use the palm buttons on the side to start the weld sequence. In manual mode, the operator has the ability to rack the torch down or up, as well as uh, close and open the curtain. Um, we also have the ability to jog the machine forward and reverse. Uh, in manual mode, you'll notice that our home light is lit. And that's a dual function button. If we are in manual mode as we are here and we jog reverse, our home button is now out of position. Uh, we can hit the button once, put the machine back in automatic mode, and it cycles back to the home position. When it's satisfied, that light goes steady. If we are back in manual mode, jog again in reverse, and we want to make this our new home position. We push and hold the button in for approximately five seconds. Once complete, the light goes steady and we now have a new home position. We control the weld travel speed here. In between the indexes, uh, we will ramp up to a uh, rapid speed and uh, the uh, stop and resume sequence are buttons that we can use to pause and resume the weld if we need to make corrections to the uh, to the part before the weld cycle is truly complete. In the manual mode or in the automatic mode if we turn our welder off and we run a sequence we'll hit both palm buttons which are required and we have to hold the palm buttons in long enough for the weld curtain to close completely. Once closed completely, the sequence is started. And we can determine based on this button lighting up when a weld would be taking place. Right now we're rapid traveling to the next position. And once there, we are welding and traveling at our weld speed. And then we'll continue this until we've completed our all four welds and we will return back to home. This is our last weld. At this point, the machine is now cycling back to home. The torch is rotating back. The head is traveling up. And once the head is in uh, full upright position and the torch has stopped moving, the curtain will open and the light will go steady. We'll now take a look at the controls we have on the side of the cabinet. Just a basic overview of the complete system before the voice explaining the operation of the system. Here you can see the top of the unit and now down to the pedestal area. We're going to do a weld cycle here um, to give you an overview of where our buttons are set on the main operator console. We are set to auto. Our weld is set to on. Um, these go back to a home position, so these aren't used currently. We have our fume exhaust set to off. Uh, the purpose of this switch is we can choose to have the fume exhaust on all the time. Or we can switch it to off, which only operates when a weld sequence is taking place uh, to save down to save on shot noise and um, 
overrunning the uh, fume exhaust machine. Um, our jog is disabled because we are in automatic mode. Uh, we can set our weld speed. We are currently at a home position and uh, these buttons would not need to be used unless we wanted to start and stop the sequence. When we push the palm buttons in, the curtain starts to close. If we release before the curtain closes all the way, uh, the weld cycle is not started. We'll close these and let the weld cycle complete. is now cycling back to home. The head is going up. Once the torch has stopped rotating, the curtain will open and the fume exhaust system will turn off. The part is now ready for removal and replacement. On the side of the main panel, our first knob starting at the top is stitch time. This dictates how much of a stitch weld we put on the part. Uh, the machine is set to do four welds 90 degrees apart, so the count will remain the same, uh, but it's up to the operator to determine the length. Overlap time. If we are not in stitch weld and we operate this switch over to continuous, uh, this is the amount of time that the torch and arc remain on and continue rotating past the start of the weld. This is useful to tie the uh, end of the weld in with the uh, start. Gives you more complete weld and uh, less likely for defects and leaks. Start delay is the amount of time the torch remains stationary while it is still on to develop a puddle before rotation is started. And the switch at the bottom switches from continuous mode to stitch mode. And again, stitch mode is set for four welds 90 degrees apart. Uh, this is a quick overview of the weld control. It is located in the upper left corner of the enclosure. This first knob adjusts our wire feed speed. Second knob adjusts our voltage. Uh, this top switch is for trigger hold. You'd want to leave that in the down position on this machine. And the next switch gives us the option to jog the wire or purge. Uh, 